Hello, it's Big Mike, and today we're going to do some simple splicing methods and crimping methods. Every time you splice a wire or crimp a wire, that's the most potential you have for a problem where the wire breaks down, uh, you overheat, connection comes loose. And so we're going to go over some basics today, starting with some low voltage speaker wire and some crimps on that connections up to some big number two copper where we're going to manually do some split bolts and show you actually the proper way to tape up a split bolt. And we're also going to do an irrigation or a outside uh, low voltage lighting scenario where we solder the wires a little bit and use a resin seal. So we're going to start with some crimps and then work our way up to the bigger wire. We're going to do some wire splicing, basic wire splicing, and first we're going to start with a butt splice, and then we're going to start with a couple uh, solder splices. So first we're going to do basic butt splice. Now the butt splices come in a bunch of different colors and the colors are directly proportioned to the size of the wire that can fit into them. So the little blue one here, the wire goes in nice and tight. Once again, the little blue on the crimper, the little blue color corresponds with the size of the crimp. Now that one had a little wire come up. Make sure you get them all twisted in there good. Goes in there, you can feel it's in there nice. Put it in the blue dye. Give it a good squeeze. And that's your basic butt splice. Now on terminals, we have a variety of terminals that we can use. Here's a blue one for terminating a wire. There's your blue. And I have a yellow one here for the, this is a number 10 stranded wire. And it twists in there and it's a yellow. The yellow is the bigger one in the back. Get a good crimp on that. So that is your number 10 wire crimp. So you're going to make that up to a terminal and you have that crimp there. So then this one here is your smaller one and this is your butt splice and then there's another way to do a butt splice or a, just a splice you gotta skin it a little bit longer come off today. There it goes. So I'm going to solder this connection. But before I start twisting it together, I have what's called shrink tubing. I'm going to go with this one here. I'm going to slide the shrink tubing onto the wire. Get it about halfway each. 
twist it around. Good and tight. So that's good. And don't be in a rush when you're soldering. So just take your time. Soldering connects the wires together. I kind of like the smell of solder. Oh, it's probably not good for you. But just try to make sure you get it all nice. Don't get it too bunched up. Heat it up. I need a little more right on the end there. It's all flowing in there pretty good. Doesn't look bad at all. It's not that beautiful, but... Then you just side your shrink tube over, get it over the top. And I'm using my heat gun here. This is just a paint removal gun and we use this for a lot of different things. So that's your solder joint with shrink tube on top. To this is a typical ground wire that you have spliced inside your box. So you just twist it. And this is called a barrel crimp. You put this barrel, this would be inside your box. So you just get it down here. And once again, use the crimper. And that's a barrel crimp for a ground wire. Another thing we do on our Malibu wires, our low voltage lighting systems, I, um, I've had problems in the past with connections for my Malibu, and there is some weatherproof wire nuts that you can buy. I'm not a big fan of those. I take my low voltage Malibu wires to another level. Brother, you take it to a hole. Never. Never. I twist my wires. We put solder on our connections for the Malibu wires. For the low voltage lighting it's not Malibu anymore um, so I get my just because I've had so much problem with corrosion and water because um, you end up burying these in the dirt and then while it's still warm I get my wire nut on there My wire nuts on there, good and tight. And then I also use before at the end of the job when I know all the lights are working, my final makeup before I bury everything, we do. It's a 3M product again. It's a resin seal, so you just. Work the two resins together. They work up. Work them together. Takes a minute or two. It's a catalyst that works together. So it's a great product. And once they work together, take a little time working it all together. Don't rush it. 
I should be wearing gloves because this stuff sometimes gets on your fingers and it's a pain in the ass. So you work that up, and get it all down to the bottom. Cut off the one end. This thing doesn't want to open up a lot of times. I have trouble getting these things to open. I have trouble in the supermarket too, getting the bags to open. Here we go, we got the knife in there finally. Damn, this thing doesn't want to open up. These are kind of messy. They don't want to open up today for some reason. Here we go. Push it all the way down the bottom. And I have a wire tie right here. Put the wire tie on there. Don't let it slide away on you. Now that's good to bury. It's a little bit pricey, but if you're doing a quality job, you gotta spend the money and do the quality job. That's all I can say. So that is a resin seal on a connection. And we do this too on, if we have in-ground boxes for like pole lights and stuff like that, we always use these resin seals. Okay, today we're gonna show you also, on the splicing area, stepping it up to the larger size wires where you have a lot more amperage. Some guys use the big blue wire nuts, and I've used the big blue wire nuts if the amperage is low. But um, on these, we have two number eights, and this is a split bolt to tie the two number eights together. So you just kind of hand tighten it. Then you take your, I don't know, like my channel locks. And my adjustable wrench. Just tighten them up, get them Good and tight. I always give it the tap. Now the tap is supposed to help set the wires. Let's see if I can get another at least half a turn out of this. After the tap, yep, tap dead. Okay, the biggest thing with these is the wrap, in my opinion. I always start with my cambric tape first. And it's an insulating tape to help insulate. You get a lot of you get a lot of heat. Any connection can cause heat. So we don't want any problems here. Got it all covered up. That's my cambric tape. Then the next I use is a rubber tape to insulate. And the rubber, I always stretch out a piece and cut it. And then when you're putting on the rubber tape, you pull it a little bit while you're putting it on so it sticks to itself. Make sure you get it all covered the whole area well. You, you got to be sure, especially on some of these little wires, that none of the fibers are sticking out. I just want to make sure I get it all covered. That looks good. And then I finish it off with a vinyl Scotch 33. Scotch 
33. Some guys just put a Scotch 33 on, but that's not right. Um, and I've done them before with just rubber tape, but I always like to have the cambric on there first. There it is. That's your basic split bolt on a smaller wire. Now we're going to do a split bolt for three bigger wires. And these are, I believe they're number twos. Three of them. Now there's a couple of, here's a big split bolt we're going to use for all three. And then this is a smaller split bolt. But this particular split bolt is designed for copper to aluminum. So I could use this particular one. This does copper and aluminum. So if you did have a linen wire, you have that piece in the middle that you use to have the aluminum and copper on one side. But we're not going to use that one today. We're going to use this bigger one because we have three good size wires going in here. Like if you're in a, a, pull, a big pull can or something. So get them in there and just... Once again, tighten them up by hand so they're all nice and lined up. And then take my channel locks. And my crescent. Tighten it up. Good and tight. We're going to have, on this particular splice, you could have a hundred amps going through here and then I always give it the the tap and that helps set all your fibers your wires in there and now I've got a couple more <sighs> It looks good now. I'm going to start with the Cambridge. It's like a fiber tape, actually. And 3M is really proud of this stuff. It doesn't come cheap. And you can't get this at Home Depot. This is at your electrical supply house. You can get rubber tape, though, at Home Depot. You can get that at an electrical supply house. Just go in, and it's the 3M product, Scotch. Um, yeah, it's a cambric tape. The guy behind the counter. I think you really know something. You go in there, see that? So when you put on the rubber tape, once again, give it a little tug, and it stretches it, and it adheres to the bottom layer better. Now I'm going to finish it off with a vinyl tape. Once again, it's a good 3M vinyl. I think this this vinyl is actually rated for 600 volts. And just cover the whole thing. And I like to keep my wires not sticking too past the split bolt so they don't poke the end of the tape. Because this is going to be tucked inside of a pull can or a, the head of a motor. Um, so there, there's your 100 amp splice. So today we did, we did a butt splice here. And then we did a solder splice here with shrink tube on it. And then we did a lands landscaping splice that's going to be in the ground. So I soldered the wires together. And then I used a, another 3M product, a resin, to cover the wire nut so there's no moisture or anything. And I always, on my landscape wiring, I always put solder on there. So just as, because I've had so many problems with landscape wiring, 
I just go overboard on landscape wiring. We did some number eights tied together with a split bolt, how to properly do a split bolt with the cane bridge or the vinyl tape, the rubber tape, and then the vinyl on top. And then we did a three wire splice with a bigger split bolt. Well, this is compared to like uh, at least a hundred amp splice here. So we did three wires. I showed you how to wrap it with the vinyl and the rubber and the Cambridge on the bottom. So that's what we did today. So these are the main splices that you will have to learn how to do to be a decent electrician. And I think that's going to cover our splicing for today. So once again, thank you very much. Looking forward to your comments.